Okay, now that I'm sure that I've pushed the record button. Puppy kisses for the people. Oh, are you a happy wood dog? Yes, you are. All right, good day to guys. It's, uh, it's getting a little cold out. It's a couple days before Halloween here and uh, our ground didn't thaw today. So it's, uh, I guess this is officially the start of winter. I wanna talk a little bit about a couple of general things when we're talking about stairs. It's time to do some layout and uh, to start cutting our stringers. And we mentioned earlier the importance of just a basic plan. And the thing with stairs is that code for stairs tends to change somewhat regularly. Code also varies from province to province or state to state. Um, I'm only used to working in British Columbia. I really don't know what happens in the rest of North America. But I do know from other people that I've talked with that there are quite a few differences when it comes to the code. Um, so I want to emphasize that you get, if you're new to stairs or you're just not sure, get a copy of the code um you know you can you can either buy online print it off or you can get a hard copy whatever works for you but i mean we're talking about stairs we got one two three we got a close to a dozen pages of code on stairs and then we start talking about construction of things like stringers and whatnot so there really is a lot of details in it and missing one, just one of those details, can uh, not only um, cause a fail inspection, but it can also create maybe an unsafe uh, product. And uh, you know, people, if you're doing this, uh, people are relying on you to to uh, either know what you're doing or figure out what you're doing. Uh, so there's there's no shame in looking in the code book. Um, you know, if you have a good inspector, you can run a couple specific questions uh, by them. But generally, I. Uh, they tend to get frustrated if they are being asked a bunch of questions by DIYers and they don't really want to become an encyclopedia. Uh, so maybe, you know, limit them to just one or two specific questions. Uh, if you have more than that, get a, get a, a code book um, or get a stair building book, you know, if you can find one, especially if it's relevant to your area. So when we're talking about stairs and stair construction, there's a lot of options, a lot of varieties with how you're actually going to do it. But for us, we're doing wooden stringers. We're doing two by planking on the top of the stairs. We are going to use two two by sixes side by side. The reason why we're doing that, we're not using one two by 12, is although the two by 12 is structurally a little bit stronger, the two two by sixes give much better drainage and they also give some slip protection, having that extra groove down the middle in between where the two boards meet up gives a lot of traction and uh, it's a very slippery climate around here. So uh, give that a little bit of thought as to what your stair covering is going to be. Perhaps the most important thing when doing stairs is to maintain consistency. And there's multiple different ways of, of helping uh, ensure that there's not uh, variances that go out of tolerance. Uh, for example, consistency when it comes to uh, cutting the steps. I think five millimeters here that you can have uh, for a variation in a step. Now, uh, it's to give you an idea that's 25, roughly 25 millimeters is an inch. So that's about a quarter inch. It's in my experience that anything at an eighth of an inch or greater, you are gonna notice it, or at least as a builder, you will notice it. And uh, you really don't want anything that's gonna become a trip hazard. So aim to be better than a quarter, or sorry, better than an eighth of an inch when you're cutting your stringers. You also want to watch that you don't have your stringers on a slope. You want to get the slope of your stringers cut right. You don't want to have your stairs cut like this and have your treads on a slope such that um, it's going to become a, a potential slip hazard. Um, you know, maybe it's not so much of a big deal if you are doing um, uh, this in, in a drier climate. But here where we have snow and ice and rain and sleet and, and moss and all the good stuff, uh, you know, it's important to... To, to keep keep the stairs square and level. Um, one way 
can help with your layout is to use these guys. Uh, these are stair gauges and they simply clamp on to your framer's best friend, the framing square. And so you can set the pitch of your stairs, you clamp these on, and then you have a stop, a positive stop that doesn't move that you can go to when you're cutting each stair. And it really takes the variation out, or helps to. Um, another thing to help with consistency is, in, see in this case, we're gonna be cutting five stringers. You're gonna to wanna to cut one stringer, double check that it's right, and then use that as a template. If you are doing something uh, in a house and you need a template that you can bring back to your shop, I found it's much easier to use plywood. Get a piece of three quarter inch, five eighths, whatever, um, you know, ply, and uh, use that as a template. It's a lot easier to pack around than a two by. Um, Perhaps the other area that I've seen that can really uh, kill a set of stairs quick is if too much material is cut away uh, in the throat of the step. So in your board, when you have your cut, our stringer comes down like this. And there's a code minimum for how much material has to be left. And here it's about three and a half inches that has to be left. I suspect that's a pretty standard measurement. Uh, I, but I don't know, let me know in the comments if it's different for where you live. Um, this is a real big concern if you are cutting your stringers out of two by tens. If you're cutting out of two by tens, it can be really hard to get, um, to, to get your, your minimum uh, throat in there, as well as having enough tread depth. Also, I should mention a little bit of terminology. When you are talking, uh, when you read in the book, you will read rise and run and rise is just simply the vertical portion of a step, also known as the riser. And then you have tread depth, which is essentially the run. Technically it's not. Technically your tread depth can be different than your run, but um, that's with overhang, if you have like a nosing overhang. Uh, but you can think of tread depth as, as run. Now, when it comes to calculating out stairs, if you have anything more than a couple steps on the back of a deck, uh, take the time to figure it out. There's people out there who have some very detailed um, explanations on how to figure out stairs. And I'm not even gonna try. Um, I figured it out the, the long math method way, and it's really not overly complicated. You need a basic calculator and uh, with some basic measurements and um, you know, you're off to the races. But it is also, uh, Full of areas where there's prone for mistakes and I have found it to be much more worth my time to use a program. I use a program called Stair Deluxe or sorry Deluxe Stairs and you put all your information in it it's on your phone really easy within a few minutes you've got all your information your variables figured out and it gives you uh, a data printout and so the data printout will have you know, your number of your risers, your riser dimensions, your tread dimensions, number of treads, your nosing size, stringer, minimum stringer size you have to use, your slope, um, or, you know, or, or the angle, um, what your throat thickness is going to be, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's really a stair cheat. And it also gives you an excellent um, diagram uh, or blueprint of your stairs. Really guys, that's, that's the way to go. Uh, you have a perfect cut sheet ready to go off of here. If there's any issues, it's a lot easier to see it when you have a blueprint than just a line of numbers down on a piece of plywood. Uh, I, at least I find it is. I'm not the best at conceptualizing things. So if you're like me, you might find uh, having a, uh, a blueprint just fantastic. Okay, one other thing talking about where people go wrong, where I see issues. In most circumstances, places where people make mistakes is when they forget to account for flooring thickness at the top, tread thickness on the last step, and whatever the flooring is going to be down here. You want all these steps, once they're finished, you want them all to be nicely, um, you know, even, that eighth of an inch we're talking about or better. 
If you have carpet that's going to go down, you have to keep in mind you're going to need to add that three quarters of an inch for your carpet material. In this case, we have an inch and a half thick flooring up here because we're using two by material for our decking. And the last two areas that I see people get themselves into trouble with stairs uh, when I've been called to do like redos, um, they've either tried to space the stringers out too wide. Um, you know, stringers are like floor joists. If anything, come in a bit. You know, if you're looking at it, in this case, we could almost squeeze it out of four stringers. Um, you know, maybe if we tuck them in a little bit, we could, but we're gonna go and put five in and it's just gonna be a lot more solid. Same thing with floor joists. You know, if you're looking at it and you're looking at your flooring material and you're right on the edge, looking at a 24 inch center on, on center joist, you know, that's a great time to uh, maybe talk to your engineer or your designer and say, you know, what about let's move these in a little bit so we don't have a bouncing floor. I kind of feel like I'm failing you a little bit when it comes to knowledge with the stairs because there is so much stuff to keep in mind when it comes to stairs. Um, it's not something that you can easily just uh, pick up just from a, a single vlog. Um, so really there's no shame in getting out a book from the library, getting a hold of a code book. Incidentally, most public libraries will have a copy of a local code book that you can look up the stuff. Um, you know, the code books here at least, they're uh, I think three or four hundred dollars and um, yeah, maybe you don't need the whole book. So, a uh, couple areas that people will get themselves into trouble, or a couple more areas, is they will forget to compensate for the tread height on the bottom step. Notice how on this bottom step, that first riser, how it's shallower than the rest. Without getting into a bunch of details of why, you can generally keep as a general rule that you have to subtract the thickness of your tread off of that riser height. Now something else you have to keep in mind is what the flooring height is going to be down here. If you're framing this in a house and there's going to be um, a built up floor, maybe there's tile going down and maybe it's Italian marble. And I'll tell you, um, you know, some of that stuff's pretty thick. Uh, and, and if you don't know that you have to account for that inch, uh, that's gonna be a big difference. Or maybe there's lino going down. <laughs> We're talking, you know, a 16th of an inch. So know what you're dealing with. Remember to account for that. That's a mistake that you can make, um, you know, quite easily. And it's, it's one that, um, well, most mistakes with stairs you can't fix, but this is this is definitely one where you shouldn't fix. I've seen risers or stringers with blocks underneath them, and it's just not good. Um, you know, I don't know how they passed inspection. Maybe they hadn't, but um, please leave it. Thank you. I'm not trying to steal my stair gauges, but um, keep keep that in mind. Um, the other area that you can go wrong with, and one that even if you're using a program like Deluxe Stair to help uh, you figure it out, um, is do not forget about your overhead height. Um, if you are doing stairs that go down a level from one level to the next down, or in some outside applications, but usually not, usually just indoors, don't forget about your head clearance room that you need when you are passing underneath that above floor. To complicate things, sometimes that is also used as a bulkhead space to run a bit of HVAC or something, and that'll eat up a little more room. So figure out how much space you have, what your height is, and at that point in that height, figure out what your available run is to where the top, the start of your stringers are to a vertical line drawn plumb down from where that overhead clearance has to be taken in and put that in ink because if you forget that you're ripping out your stringers and you're doing it again you know um the thing was the thing with messing up stringers is that it's uh it's aesthetically obviously a problem but it's really also a safety issue and there's going to be a lot of people going up and down your set of stairs over the years and you really want to make sure that you nail them down good you know, I, by that I mean you want to make sure that you, you pay attention to the details and that you're not botching something together, uh, you know, because you made a mistake.
that's a, one area or one reason why a template is so great. You know, a life-size template, um, you know, especially if you have multiple stringers uh, or, you know, multiple staircases that you're doing. Um, you know, quite often if you, you have a house that has two or three staircases going from one floor to the next, um, quite often there'll be continuity there and you can just carry over um, more or less one template, you know, or from one to the other. Um, but um, that, that opens up another caveat. You know, I've seen a three quarter inch difference in the run over the distance of the run from where the a plumb line would be drawn down from where the start of the top of the stringers are over to where your stringers land on the floor. I've seen a three quarter inch height difference uh, out of level from that point to that point. You know, so um, a good idea if you are doing this in, um, uh, well, a, a good idea no matter what, um, if, if you want to try to figure out to avoid that and you don't have a laser level, what you can do is you can take a four foot or longer level, take it off of the top of the subfloor where your stringers are starting, put yourself a line down. You know, if you're dealing with finished wall, of course, throw a little painter's tape down. Um, you know, and if you're dealing with a long set of stairs, uh, you know, get yourself maybe a 10 foot two by that's straight, use it to extend your level. But one way or another, carry that line across until you get to where the end of the run of your stairs are, where that stringer is going to land. Carry your line over to that point, measure down, what have you got? You might have 101 and a half inches here and 103 quarters here. And that's something that you're going to really want to watch for. Now, normally it's not that bad, but, um, you know, we've all seen stuff that normally should never have been done. And uh, it happens. It happens all the time. So uh, our job, the carpenter's job, is to see it, to pick it up, to account for it. You know, the buck kind of stops with us at this point. If we frame off of something faulty and we don't pick it up, even though we may directly not be at fault, um, people further down line from us are going to directly feel the ramifications. The homeowner is going to feel the added expense. The contractor, the GC, he's going to have the added stress of this issue now. I can't tell you how many times a GC has been happy because I've brought and something up that needs to be fixed before we start work on something. And you would think that they would be pissed, but reality is most of the time, they're happy to see it at that stage. It is easy to fix at that stage. It is hard to fix when you're in your final finishing stages. So keep those few points in mind. I think that'll help. And um, I'll take you along through some of the basic steps of cutting stairs. And uh, you know, we'll, I'll also show you a couple of tricks when it comes to laying them out, to setting them up, making sure everything's even. You know, we're we're working off of um, uh, we're working off a concrete slab that has been in place for 40 years. It settled some. You'll see um, a couple tricks for helping deal with that.